Welcome to the light gate. We have a big night ahead of us. Uh, somebody we dearly care about is uh, on with us tonight. He already has a presence on the internet in podcasting and mm -hmm. live voice, uh, everything. Preston's going to introduce him to you in a minute. Right now, we are coming to you from the beautiful city of New Orleans at 105.3 FM at the uh, United Public Radio Network and the United Paranormal Radio Network at 105.3 FM. We are on Roku, we are Tumblr, we are uh, Facebook. Uh, the Light Gate is also on uh, my Facebook. We have uh, YouTube, and we're so good to go. Preston, over to you. <laughs> Thanks, Dolly. Yeah, thanks everyone for joining us. I'm super excited. We have, let me see, what episode is this? This is episode 13 of The Light Gate. And as Dolly says, I'm Preston Dennett. My lovely co-host is Dolly Safran. And we're super excited to have you with us tonight because we do have a wonderful guest. But let me just say a quick hi to some of you who have joined us today. I'm always excited to see you all here. And let's see, I see some definite Familiar names, Foggy Notions podcast. Thanks so much. Yeah, here's to one million views. That could happen. <laughs> you never know. Uh, hi, Magnus. Nice to see you here. John Smith. Uh, hello. Uh, Rad Peanut. Always nice to see you here. Oh, hi, Susan. Very glad you could join us tonight. Uh, Bryson's Folly. Let's see. Oh, Louise. Thank you, Louise. You were here last time, so thanks for joining us again. Hi, Janice Conant. Uh, let's see who else has joined us. W. Decker. Well, yeah, we, it looks like we have a nice big audience here with us. Um, Dolly's disappeared for a second. She'll, hopefully she'll be right back. Oh, Renee. Hi, Renee. Nautical Strings. Let's see, Dana Matthews. Uh, you're here as well. Oh, real badgers. Um, nice to see you. Um, let's see. Who else do we have here? Zenfire. Yeah, it looks like a nice big audience. So I'm super excited to have you all here. Um, hopefully, Dolly will be back in a second. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, there she is. <laughs> Freaking me out. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Okay, yeah, well, I'm super happy to see all of you here. Zenfire, Odyssey Counseling, Betty Duncan. Um, and yeah, I'm so glad you could join us because we do have a really wonderful guest. It's someone we've both known for quite some time and have spoken with extensively. He's got a pretty interesting story to tell, to say the least. And his name is Marquise Williams. And let me just read his bio here. Marquise Williams is, of course, a UFO investigator, investigating a lot of different things, uh, very much into philosophy and, as well. He's an experiencer, podcaster, radio host, and voice actor. Uh, his main interest and focus has been on the UFO, UAP phenomena, non-human intelligences, and philosophy. I took a bunch of philosophy classes in college, so that should be fun to talk a little bit about. Uh, Marquise has been studying the phenomenon for 10 years and more recently has transitioned into researching and speaking about the phenomenon with other researchers as well. And you may recognize him. He is the weekend host of Dave Scott's hugely popular Spaced Out radio podcast. And Marquise is connecting with a lot of other researchers and experiencers. Uh, he has a lifetime of extraordinary UFO and alien experiences. He has been a guest on many podcasts, and in fact, was a recent panelist at Contact in the Desert. So his story is truly supernatural. And to this day, Marquis strives to figure out what E.T. wants with him. As he writes, and I quote, I believe that humanity is experiencing true contact from this non-human intelligence, and through that contact, there seems to be a message. Through this work, I hope to discover and clarify what that message is alongside others who are searching for the truth. Although the truth may be elusive, it will reveal itself to those who are open-minded with an honest intention to know it. I could not agree more. So this is going to be all kinds of fun. 
Uh, let me just bring you in, Marquise. I know you can hear me in the green room. There you are. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? What's up, guys? It's a pleasure <laughs> to be here. It's funny hearing your bio read. This uh, because you're like, I'm just a guy who talks about aliens on the internet, and then someone reads your bio and you're like, I guess I do have all those things going for me too, but that's not how I see myself. <laughs> so, so yeah, thank you for making me sound kind of cool. You know? <laughs> Oh, you are cool. Are you kidding? You are, definitely, definitely. I'm, I'm excited about it. One of the things I get, I want to announce this tonight, just so everybody knows. Uh, Symmetry hasn't been put on audiobooks yet. And I've been searching and looking for somebody to read uh, for the book. And I we've decided, me and Preston, that we'll put Marquise in that seat. And he'll start reading in a couple of weeks. And we'll see. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. I'm excited. we're excited. So that's the voice. You're looking at him right now. <laughs> you'll, you'll, I know you'll enjoy it because I like to hear myself talk too. So <laughs> I, I really do. No, listen, my, my, my um, unicorn, I call her my unicorn. She says, you just like to hear yourself talk, don't you? Say, so I guess that's why I became a voice actor because I really enjoy just the, 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 I don't know, the, the resonance of my own voice. I want to hear myself talk about things that I'm passionate about. Because I, who's what better perspective to learn from than your own? Right. Um, so in right. my mind, that's how I see it. I see it as a feedback yeah. loop, so to speak, to discover more about myself. That's why people sing. Did you know that? They like to hear themselves sing. So it's I, an I art did form. Not. Yeah. Singing yeah. is just like singing. You're 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 creating art. Yeah. Hey, I, mean, I, I, I want you to music, but singing music is that much closer to it. So I totally yeah. get that. Yeah. So, okay, so we want to know, where does this all begin for you? How did Where does it, oh, well, when I was just a, when I was just a fetus in my mother's tummy, <laughs> um, no, <laughs> uh, let me, let me think. So uh, I was once a single celled organism. No, I, I, um, I think that this all began when I was a kid. Probably the first experience is what I would, what I usually refer back to. Um, when I was a kid, I was about, it was after my father passed away, um, and I had an experience in my grandmother's house where my dad was, for the most part, where I woke up in the middle of the night and I saw, you know, the light, brightest light I've ever seen. And I've actually been talking to people about this lately to try to discover more about my experience. And the more that I talk about it, the more I realize just more and more things become interesting to me. And the one thing that I think is interesting is that the light was so bright. It's brighter than anything I've ever seen, even to this day. But yet, whenever I when I got up and walked to the curtains and peeled back the curtains, it was just a beam of light. And so I don't understand. And again, I'm just reminiscing now why the beam of light was shining so brightly into the into the window when all that I saw was just a beam of light beam uh, pointing at the grass. So did they point the beam? Did they wake me up? Like was the intention to wake me up to get me to walk to towards window? I have no idea. But that's just what it was. What it was. Um, and when I saw that beam of light, it was like a cone that went down into the grass. And um, I just thought to myself, wow, that's weird. And so I followed the cone to its source and it was a disc, um, an actual flying saucer with the dome on top. And it was wobbling really slow like this above the mm -hmm. trees, just above the trees. That's so no, because that's what they do. They wobble. Yeah. One, Which one was I look for to, yeah. to really determine if I was actually seen a UFO because they have a tendency to sort of waver a little bit. They bob yeah. and weave. Yeah. You know how an, a boat is on the ocean and it's yeah. in the water? Yeah. It's riding magnetic lines, magnetic fields. And it's like being on a boat on the sea and you see it bobbing and weaving. That That's makes so perfect so where, sense. Where was this, Marquise? This was in um, in English Town, New Jersey, or I guess it would be, they changed it now, Woodville, New Jersey is what it is. Um, and, and they, it was in my grandmother, she owned this mass amount of property and it was all surrounded by literally woods, which is why it's probably called Wood, Woodville. And, um, she, th this was right in her backyard, in the, in the backyard. I had thought it was the neighbors before I even got up. I thought it cause they, they do parties and stuff like that all the time and they're good people. But I thought there was a bunch of cars or maybe the police cause the bright lights were so bright, but no, it was this flying saucer. And as soon as I looked at it and I saw, I wasn't afraid. I didn't like just i just was curious like oh wow that's a flying saucer in, in my <laughs> backyard a ufo and as i thought that the light started to move towards the window where i was standing and as soon as it got up the wall and then toward, it hit me it hit me no pain just like i knew it hit me and then i blacked out and then i opened my eyes in a moment and when i opened my eyes i was laying down and tucked in my bed <laughs> 
Uh oh. <laughs> so that's. <laughs> how, how old were you? I don't. I was anywhere. You know, when I think back, I was anywhere between eleven and thirteen years old. That's the only. That's the, the mm -hmm. range that I keep going by because the dates are very difficult. When you guys, when you're looking back at your at your memories, I'm thinking it was after my father passed, but that's around anywhere between eleven and thirteen. Um, years old was when I was in New Jersey. So I'm still confused about the exact time, but anywhere from 11 to 13 years old is when I had that experience. That's the first one. Um, well, wait, 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 but I have a few questions, <laughs> if I may. Sure, sure, yeah. Were you alone in, in your room? I was, your I was alone. Yep, I was alone. Mm -hmm. I was, um, I used to sleep in the living room because it, my grandmother had this sectional that wrapped around the whole living room. And I thought that was so cool because it's like, you know, when you're a kid, like even as a, as 11, 13 year old kid, it's like you're sleeping on a giant bunk bed or, or a giant um uh, uh jumping you know jumping place because I used to jump on the bed all the time. Don't tell my <laughs> grandmother, but it was awesome. You know, it pulled out into a bed, and then I had the bed in this the other side of the sectional to lay on. It's massive. The whole freaking room is a bed. It was it was fun <laughs> to me. So yeah, I was by myself in that in that second living room, uh, where the window was the whole size of the wall, almost the entire size of the wall. It's a huge oh, window. Wow. And so, and so how how high up would you estimate? The this I would what? say, well, I would say if I were to try to guess, um, I mean, maybe, maybe 30 feet, um, because That's it wasn't cool. any higher than the trees, you know, it was, a, the trees were barely, the tip of them were barely like visible beyond the craft. So it had to be right at the very top of the trees. So not, not too, too high, not too, okay. too high. Did you, you make hear, did you hear or feel any sort of a vibration in your ears? Not that I can remember, not at all, no. And I know somebody asked me before about colors. The only, th and this is, again, I only realized this having this conversation before when people asked me, there was almost like a blue, like a blue tint right. to, the, to the area. And right. both times I had an abduction experience, there was a blue tint. Right. And I didn't, I just right. thought it was ambient light, you know, like the, like a light's on and there's kind of an ambience of uh, maybe a blue ambience, but ambience. But I don't know. That's the only thing that I can think of that I noticed that time. That time, no noises that I can remember, nothing. Just a very silent, quiet hover, you know. Well, the blue light is significant. I've heard it a million times. Blue light filling the room often is what people will describe. Or a beam of light coming right through the wall, even. Yeah, I don't know how that's possible. Yeah, <laughs> it's weird. I don't Again, when you think about these experiences, you... And you try to make sense of them without hypnosis. I don't want to do hypnosis. D you can reveal little details if you're asked. If you're asked, if you're asked, you think about it. But honestly, I don't want to relive because the second time was terrifying. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I was oh, terrified. Nothing. Oh, ha okay. Nothing happened. I just was scared. Wait, I was wait. just. <laughs> I, I still have a few more questions. And then sure, sure. We'll move on, because uh, so this happened, and you, you're thinking, okay, UFO, mm -hmm. uh, and I suppose. It, at that point, you hadn't really thought about this subject. No, but, no. So did you tell anyone? No, what happened? no way. No way. I'm <laughs> no. not going to sound crazy. <laughs> no way, man. I would maybe say I was crazy. And so <laughs> I just I just like it's one of those things where I don't even know how to explain this. It's the only experience that I had that was so like that bizarre and fantastic that I, I just knew if I told someone they think I was crazy. And so I just put it in the back of my mind, like a repressed memory. And that's another thing that's weird. Why is that a response? Why would that be a response versus, Oh my gosh, I just got a, you know, I just saw an alien spacecraft or I just saw you. I don't know why I didn't. I just naturally just thought I, I probably should just keep this to myself and then suppress it. Yeah. It's so. society does that to us. It programs you for it long before you're even thinking about it. I have a question. Um, after uh, you have fully conscious memory of that, what did happen, right? Just to that point. Well, yeah, I, just okay. to that point. Does did it if it faded for you or you you say repressed, what do you mean by repressed? Is it just something you quit thinking about? I just quit thinking about it. it. It's more like yeah. I just um no, I I'll never forget. I I've always remembered it. Always remember that that okay, that so whole scenario. So okay. Yeah, but it's very real but, in other words. That's yeah. What oh, it's mean. very real. It's one of the most vivid memories I have of my whole life. The okay. only thing is that I can't like, I can't, I always felt like I just shouldn't talk about it. I know this is going to sound also weird. It's almost like I had this intuitive knowing that that this is just for me to know and no one else to know. This it is just be. my experience. I don't know. I don't know. I hear um, that but, a lot too. Stuff, 
Oh. The craft itself, what did it look like in your markings? Right, on yeah. It? It's so it was great. It was this is a good question too. And nobody's asked me what does a craft look like as a, other than the shape of it. It had a gray color, but like a like a whitish gray tint to it, and it was ru rugged. <laughs> it wasn't like a beautiful polished craft. It was kind of rugged, so to speak. Like you could see that. I don't know. I don't know how else to explain it. So like it wasn't perfect metal. Let's put it that way. It would, but you could tell it was a metallic kind of craft. Um, so like a silver, white, gray, or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. The whole thing was uniform. I didn't see any variation of color whatsoever. But it wasn't like a perfectly polished craft. So that's the only thing. That, like a dull metal. Sometimes when they're coming in, the dull is interesting to me because. Sometimes when they're coming in, they're in phase. And if they hmm. brought a light down to you, that means they were in phase, okay? They're interdimensional at that point. They haven't fully jumped in with you. And uh, you can see them through like a veil of something on it. And people describe it as a color or like you're hmm. saying, like it looks rugged. It's like you're not actually seeing the exact surface of it. Like Yeah, over yeah. Is there, I don't know about a haze, but like almost like it didn't, like I couldn't, I didn't want to focus. I didn't care to focus on the craft. Okay. Okay. I cared to focus on the light. My okay. whole attention was on that light. Okay. And because that's another thing. Why did I, and I, I mentioned this all the time. Why did I, why would you look at the source of a light? Like the, or the, the, you know, where the beam was shooting at. Why did I look it's there compelling. first? It's because it's compelling. All light is compelling. And if it's yeah, a but, really bright light and if it has blue in it, it automatically draws your attention. If you if you study up on psychology and yeah. what grabs our attention as humans, what what will alert you to things, bright lights, blue, white lights, those are the first two that will get yeah, your attention. I hear that well, all the time. People describe okay. UFO lights and yeah. it entrances you. This is why I think yeah. we use yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. lights on police cars and paramedics and stuff because yeah. you will notice it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I, it was more, it was more, very, it was very when consuming. When therapy was really young, doctors would use a pin light that was very bright and they would watch you, make you watch the light. Keep I think that would be bad. I think that would okay. be bad. I think <laughs> that if I were to, yeah, for me, I feel like I have this um, uh, feeling, I guess you can say, that I wouldn't be able to handle what happened. Oh, huh. okay. That's kind of the feeling that I get. Like I, not that I would have a psychological breakdown, but that the experience would, the, the memory of whatever that was for me would be so terrifying. I wouldn't be able to mentally and emotionally handle it in the moment. Um, and it would, because even to this day, I don't have it in, as much anymore because I've been doing a lot of work on myself mentally and emotionally trying to, you know, but I used to, for the longest time, and even again, up to this day, I do stay up at night sometimes because I'm afraid that I'll see them again because I've seen them before. I've seen them. A lot At of least one, one. Right? All right. Well, I still have a couple of more questions. <laughs> okay. Sure, sure. Yeah. How, how long did that whole experience last? Last when you were seeing this? Maybe light? a few minutes. Maybe a few minutes because maybe not even a few minutes. Like maybe like a minute or two. It was just so. It did feel slow. At least in terms of me. Like again. Why did I like walk over and like slowly peel the curtains aside and casually just look at the light? It maybe a couple of minutes at most, and then as soon as it light, you know, slowly moved towards me and and it hit me, I just blacked out. I don't know. I don't know. And when I got up, by the way, it was daylight. The, the, there was the sun was just coming up, so there was a lot of missing time. It was pitch black, dark outside. I was I was it was nighttime, and then I when I opened my eyes in that moment, just like blink of an eye it's daytime it's daytime how did you physically feel in the morning i didn't feel like anything i just just normal mm -hmm. like i would normally feel okay. nothing special nothing okay. you know, nothing enhanced or anything just a regular just day to me and did you ever dream about it or have any unusual dreams or anything shift I, at that point i had i had a lot of apocalyptic dreams after that for some reason um but weird ones like like I guess it was because I was a kid, but I had a dream that like the world, there was this, this, the world was terraformed by a cartoon invasion of these cartoon aliens that were terraforming the earth into these really bright colors. And if you think about like candy land, that <laughs> was essentially, it was like candy lava everywhere. And, I, and people would try to avoid touching this, this, whatever this was, because it would change them into the, this is ridiculous. <laughs> no, no, no. This is significant. 
it's just a dream you know it's just a dream but like i had dreams like that like the world was ending there would be like lights falling from the sky and 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 then i knew the world was ending or like there'd be ufos in the sky just watching they were just watching the world fall apart almost it was like they were seeing that these craft were literally just watching the 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 a cataclysm happen in real time and i would have them over and over just reoccurring dreams of the apocalypse 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 and a lot of the time it was just these craft watching the world descend into chaos uh, no i think that's hugely significant because i do hear it a lot this is a message people get often from childhood and i'm kind of connecting it to myself right now <laughs> Hmm. Because that was the age where I became obsessed with disasters, whether it was tidal waves or earthquakes or landslides or anything like that. Yeah, I was absolutely obsessed. And that was around the age I probably did have a missing time incident. Can't say for sure. Oh, man. Um, I, no, it's, but that's it sucks not knowing. <laughs> it sucks yeah. not knowing. Yeah, but like you said, I think that's the cause of missing time. If we're not ready to process it, you know, this is not supposed to be a part of our life and we're just supposed to carry on and do whatever we're supposed to do. It's not going to come into our awareness until we're ready. Hmm. I don't know when I'll be ready, but I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it, guys. I swear. Well, I still have a missing time incident when I, from 1992. That... What happened? If you don't mind me asking, what, what happened with yours? Yeah, well, I was driving along. Let me see, 1992, that would make me 65, 70, about 27 years old. Yeah. And was just driving on my way home. I was neck deep in UFOs at the time in terms of studying them. Yeah. But this little ball of light came down, dropped in front of my car, right in front of the windshield, darted back and forth a few times, and off it went. And that's all. I completely forgot about it. Like you said, I mean, this wasn't something I even shelved. I did not remember it. Hmm until a couple of months and then i did remember seeing that but i don't remember driving home i should have turned around wow. my brother and sister-in-law were like three minutes away i would have gone oh my god i saw a ufo <laughs> you're not gonna believe That's it <laughs> <laughs> nope so i don't know what happened well I, I suspect i was taken on board i suspect you uh, were yeah. too <laughs> I, I think so i think we both were i think also there were more exam uh, more accounts that i don't remember at all at all I'm almost certain there were a lot That's more. That's very than likely. That. Yeah. If you're if you're being contacted that young, you're a regular. So. Yeah. Regular. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I wish they'd tell me why. I, that'd be appreciated. <laughs> that'd be well appreciated. Well, I have my guesses, but yeah, I'd love to hear what happened next. And yeah. I'm well, sorry. that was kind of what started my journey from there. I just kind of, you know, I kind of began as a kid, just like looking into it, dabbling into TV shows and. You know, stuff like that, documentaries. I read a ton of books. I used to live at the library. My family called me. They, did, they thought I was just weird because all I would do is just try to figure out what's going on. Studying science, studying psychology, studying philosophy, studying huh. the nature of reality, a little bit of physics. At that age, I didn't understand it, but I did when I got older. There was a lot of things that I just I wanted to know. What is the nature of reality now? Because this is this is like there's nothing in my reality that tells me that that's also going on, but it's going on. And by the way, I'm not the only one because there are so many people that have these accounts that I found out about through research um, at that age that are experiencing the same thing and sometimes way more. And you know, Dolly, far yes, more ex you know explicit experiences than what I had. Right. So I knew there was something going on. Why was it not being, why is it not mainstream news? And because I'll give you an answer to that. Okay. This is important because you need to hear this. Everybody does. If you're having a hard time remembering contact, there are a few reasons why. One of them is that your abilities are switched off. You're being uh, pushed away from them. Our society is geared toward that. Fear is the number one reason you're having an uh, inability to use your abilities. Um, the second one is, is uh, your the world that we live in has been very, very unforgiving about contactees. And if you talk about it, you're considered weird and odd. Yeah. We're also being threatened with violence constantly, wars, people beat each other up all the time, people hate each mm -hmm. other all the time. These things affect us to the point that it, it shuts us in so we can't go out of ourselves and pick up on what's really real. We're living in a very heavily constructed reality by the powers that be on this planet and it's not pretty 
And that's why. That's no, because- you just answered Maggie Smith's question. Maggie Smith asked, and I just got, I wanted to, just because I thought this was interesting. If you grew up where you could see the stars, how could you think that this is it? Because Dolly just answered it. We're trained to to just stay stuck in this paradigm that limits our perceptions of reality. Um, So that was a great explanation. Your timing was perfect for that explanation there. Yeah, well, it's totally true. And it's no coincidence because the cover up is real. There's an enormous amount of time, money, and effort being put forth by, I'll call them the secret government, to make UFO witnesses look like liars, Mm -hmm. idiots. Oh, they don't have to. You know, you think think this is so interesting because you would think like, oh, you know, if, if the government's hiding this stuff, well, how come we don't find out about it? Because all they need to do is make you look crazy among your peers and you won't say a thing. Right. It's what's happening with the military personnel who are witnessing these things and they won't talk about it because yeah. they, they just recently said, and this is a crazy admission. Bryce Sable just recently said that, oh my gosh, pilots were deleting evidence of witnessing UFOs because right. they didn't want to receive the backlash from their superiors. They would right. get a stain on their record and they could lose their pilot, they could lose their ability to That's fly. That's right. Again. Your whole life would go down the tubes. Yeah. The, yeah. I have a word, a term for this. It's called mafia training, worldwide mafia training. Oh, yeah, for sure. We don't tell, you know? For sure. Yeah. 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 I interviewed a pilot once. He says, yeah. Can I use your name? He says, Yes. His name is Toshi Inue. He says, Please use my name. I want to come forward. Uh, right. And I think he, you know, Decided no more. <laughs> I am not dealing with this. It's a hero. It's a hero. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I call the hero. biggest reason everybody's confused. Okay, and this one's important to me to relate to you. Um, we are lied to constantly. We lie to each other. We lie to ourselves. We become delusional. Our governments mm-hmm. don't tell us the truth. Lying is the acceptable norm of communication on this planet. Yeah. Okay, sure. and that is a that is number two on the list. This can cut you off at the neck. It can devolve you in ways you can't even imagine. Um, It's important that we all stop and think about what we're saying out loud and what we're thinking to ourselves, Mm -hmm. because reality is reality. You can't change it. It's it's (laughs) always going to be in front of you. You just have to want to see it for what it really is. And people got to learn that. You know, preach, sister. <laughs> it's yeah. true, man. Yeah, I know it's true. Yeah. And so I, I, again, I still, I, I, yeah, we'll talk about your famous quote whenever one of these days, but <laughs> it's my favorite. One of these days. Die stupid, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite quote. I still to this day have been using that so often. It's my favorite. I, I tell my kids that, I tell my unicorn that everybody knows now. You could, if you die stupid, you got to pay for that. <laughs> it's karmic. I'm telling you, it's karmic. It's karma. Yeah, you know? that's so I mean, awesome. Face it, you get to the other side, the first person that greets you is, <laughs> how come you didn't know what was going on? You know, <laughs> you, you, you all the signs and you yeah, didn't need yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And you have to work on it. I mean, you have to work on it. E.T. Has a, has a saying. My dad taught it to me, and I realized much older that he learned it from them as well. And here it is. You ready? Know all that is knowable, then proceed. Okay? Mm. Don't open your mouth. Don't say anything until you know you're talking from fact, from knowledge, from experience, huh? that you're actually doing that, what you're doing. <laughs> if, when you do that, you speak with authority. That's where true authority comes from. And truth is a type of authority if the person speaking that authority truth has the experience laid in and they're employing it. It's it's not hard to figure out how that works. And That's we live amazing. on a planet yeah. where amazing. there's not a lot of that going on right now. We mm. need to do that. We need to all work at it every day. That's an awesome yeah. – uh, that's amazing. By the way, your dad was was an awesome person, clearly. I hear a lot about him from Beautiful. you. and he, he seems to be a really awesome guy. He so. was one of my heroes. He really was. Clearly, you know? clearly. Yeah. yeah. He was he was one exceptional dude. I, I, my mom was pretty exceptional too. You know, I I some people say that I downed her or whatever in the book, and it's not that I did that. I wanted to tell the truth, and sometimes right. the truth is hard. And uh, don't get me wrong, I love my mother. I love my mother greatly. Okay, I admired her. She just had this issue, and it was a big one, and it was hard for me to work with her for that. Same thing. My mom was one of the most, is, you know, I always see my mom as one of the most amazing human beings I've ever met. Um, yeah. But she had some serious issues that people would say caused me trauma as a child, none of which I thought about. All I can think about is how much <laughs> she loved me. 
right, you know, exactly. all I can think right. about. So yeah, it's amazing. You know, I think so, it's hard for a lot of parents to deal with the whole UFO issue too. <laughs> I, my mom, my mom did not judge me at all. And I've talked awesome. to her about UFOs and I never yeah. told about my experiences before, but um, ironically, I just, I never told my mom about my experiences. She, she has, she's watched me, so she has to know by now, but, um, she's never judged me for looking into the topic. She's actually looked to me. Um, she try, and this is, this is a good feeling by the way, guys, my mom has looked to me to understand things in life because she knows that I'm, I'm a very astute person. I, I, I read a lot. I, I'm always looking for You're a searcher, a seeker. I'm a seeker. Yes. I'm a seeker. Yeah. Yes. And she recognized that. And she, she, it makes me think that she trusts my ability to figure things out on my, and, and I, and that's a good feeling. Cause when you're right. a kid, you think, you know, everything, well, your parents tell you, no, you don't. Well, my mom embraces the, the idea that her son is really figuring things out. in this. That's life. awesome. That's a so huge that's awesome. compliment from a parent. That's awesome. My dad could yeah. never accept that. I investigated UFOs. One day I came home. Yeah. He was so excited. He's like, look, Here's what Roswell was. It was the mogul balloon explanation oh, had just man. been released by the Air Force. Oh, man. Like, See, like, Dad, no. <laughs> I couldn't that's the, that's the first ex explanation, Dad. The third one is not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most of my family did come around, but my dad never did. Not to the day he died. God bless him. It's, it's fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah. My I mom figured. sort of did right after my dad passed. Um, he he passed away and it was very cold. It was below zero. It's like 20 below. And um, the the third day after he passed away, he told her before he died that he would make it known to her that he was on the other side and that he was going to be with her. And she she even asked me, do you really believe all this stuff? And I'm like, yes, mom, I do. I know it. I know it. Right. And uh, we had to let seven dogs out of the house in 24 degrees below zero that oh. night. And that's cold. We were in a parka. Yeah. We had a couple oh blankets gosh. wrapped yeah. around us. Yeah. We're standing at the back door of the house, pushing them out the door. This light in the back never worked. I bought this house and it never worked. I tried everything. Electricians, everybody. It was just sitting there, a dead dummy light. Um, we were about five minutes out the gate waiting for him to come back in and the light blinked on and off and on and off and on and off and my mother came on glued she was <laughs> oh wow. my god it's real it's real and i'm like yeah you know that was his signal to her okay he knew it was she knew it was going to be three or something she just didn't know it would be the light going on and off and uh, she was dancing around for days after that and she 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 very slowly started to realize that oh my god you know this is real and we had a couple incidences in the house before she passed away. <laughs> she was like, okay, they're here. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's wow. real, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I want to give a shout out to your chat. Your chat is, um, guys, I want to thank you for opening up about your experiences. Some of you are talking about your experiences in the chat. It takes yeah. a lot to do that in public. And I can tell you at least, I, I think that especially with Preston and Dolly, that you're, you're safe here to, yes, to, to share absolutely. those things. And they're safe with me as well, because, again, it is it is very I think that that opening up like that lets other people know that it's OK to be vulnerable, um, especially among like minded people. And it, people will learn from your sharing of your experiences, too, by the way. So it's a, it's a good thing. And I appreciate you guys doing that in the chat. Thank you. We love we love everybody who shows up. We really do. Yeah. Um, it, it, at some point, I want to start putting up questions, but I usually do that the second hour sure sure so, but sure. yeah I'm, I'm so glad you're paying attention to the chat because oh of course i'm always <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no, uh, just so everybody knows i have a phone that i have to hold up to my eyeballs to see the chat <laughs> i am farsighted i have binocular vision and anything from my hand to my face i can't see so i'm sitting in front of a computer i can sort of see everybody's faces and I see blur. Even when my glasses is on, I cannot see it. It's yeah. a handicap. Well, I, I pop up little quotes like from this one from Great Gray Troll, Preston and Dolly, and another great guest. So thank you guys. <laughs> I will let you I know, Dolly, some... if it's a question. Yeah. But yeah, I'll, I'll be popping this little nice comments every now and then yeah. just because thank it's you. fun. And I like to interact with our chat. <laughs> yeah. But I'm I'm eager, Marquise, to hear what happened next. <laughs> That was so scary. Yeah. It was um, so the first time was uh, was more benign than the second one. The second one was uh, far more visceral for me, and I get un I, uneasy. So I apologize if you if you That's notice okay. it. I, I do get it, but I'll, I'll just I'm gonna I'm, 
I don't know why I've told this story so many times. Why do I get uneasy? Because it's so real, guys. It because you're creates. actually reliving it. That's like PTSD. Wow. You, yeah. you live certain memories, especially as you call visceral ones. They're, they feel real to you in the moment. And yeah. you put yourself back there. Um, I'm going to give you a piece of advice when you're talking about it, okay? Yeah. Just remember, as you speak and you're saying it and you're looking at it, you're looking at a movie screen of the past. It can't yeah. touch you. It can't harm you. It can't do anything to you except you watch and that gives you a chance to pay more attention to the smaller clues and what you're saying and seeing in your mind in other words that's how i remembered everything i literally sat down on the floor closed my eyes and just went into it i relived the whole thing and it popped i popped and i woke up and you could probably do that too the only thing you don't know yet and you need to figure this out is that you're afraid of what you don't know yeah. And the easiest way to be unafraid is to put a light in it on it and to show every corner of it and realize that what what you are witnessing is the past and make up your mind at the end of the memory. Don't don't pre be afraid of it. Save that for the end of it. OK, if it's okay. if it's if it's necessary to be afraid at the end of it, be afraid. But if it's not shine the light on it relive it and see what's really going on because you're not a child anymore. You're an adult and you have more knowledge, way more knowledge now than you did then. You understand things a thousand percent more. So that's how you do it. Okay. I will, I will take your insight into consideration. I will tell you okay. though, that in you, you are aware that you you're, it's almost like you fall into your body in those experiences. Right. Exactly. I know yeah. I did. Trust so, me. I did. Yeah. So, <laughs> But I will tell you guys, the second one was uh, was far more. Uh, like I said, it was more intense. I was I was engaged in researching a little bit heavier. I was about I was in my early twenties. I don't know how old you think I am, guys. <laughs> I was in my early twenties, so about ten years ago, and um, or more. Who knows? <laughs> and uh, going through a very rough time in my life, staying at my cousin's house um, for the time. And they lived in an apartment with a two bedroom, small apartment that had a kitchen, living room and kitchen, dining room and living room, like kind of back to back to back. Okay. And you can see through the whole the whole. House. So if you walk in the front door, you can see all the way through the living room, the dining room and the kitchen to the okay. back door. And the back okay. door was a glass door. So you can see through that as well. So if you wanted to, you could see all the way out back to the backyard. Okay. There's a reason why I mentioned that specifically, because I was it was about. I remember the time about 11 o'clock at night, okay? And I was laying down on a living room floor uh, in front of the, the TV, which was kind of adjacent to the door. And I got this feeling like, oh my God, like they're coming. Mm. And, and it was an overwhelming terror. Like be, there's no fear that you can experience like this fear. I've told people before, if I were placed in a, in a, in a note in the middle of the ocean on my own and they cut my arm off and I was bleeding to death where sharks were surrounding me, I wouldn't be as afraid. I would embrace death. This was more terrifying than that because I've thought about this and uh, I had that terror and I just thought, oh, my God, they're coming. I wasn't thinking about them. Why are they coming? And that thought will always resonate with me because I don't know why I said that. Why did I think that? Why did I say that? Thank you so much, John. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Um, I appreciate yeah. you. But I was, um, man, I looked up and I knew they're, they're, they're going to come. They're going to go right through that door. And when I looked up at the door, uh, you know, the, 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 all the way to the backyard where the glass door was. Right. There were three gray beings that just went straight through that door. And the, the weirdest thing to me was that, like, you would think that you would see, like, in the movies when people go through walls and stuff, there's, like, a phasing or, like, a in like a maybe a wiggly weight. It just – they just yeah. went through the door. Like, there was nothing there. Like, there was right. nothing there. And right. all three of them weren't walking. They were hovering, yeah. <laughs> which was the creepiest thing why are they hovering? That's I, just, <laughs> I don't understand why they had to do that. And so not only are these creatures walking through walls, which you're not supposed to be able to go through walls, they're hovering. 
the big heads, the big black eyes, the the pure skin, like the grayish bluish gray skin, the right. one piece suit that was like cut off at the neck and the in the wrists, if they have wrists, the yes. long fingers, the whole thing. And they were they were just hovering towards me. And I kept thinking to myself, like begging, please, like not now, not this time. I'm not ready. Like literally begging, like I was begging them to not do this. And as I was begging, you know, futilely, um, they surrounded me. The three beings surrounded me as I was laying down, just an even smooth, like floating around me like this. And then when they got to, to their positions, I thought, I will not forget this time. And again, I only had one experience that I remember, yet here I am as if this has happened many times before. Yeah. Like yeah, the thought of them brings, yeah, yeah this is you, so it's weird. You're doing what everybody does. No kidding. I've done it. I've yeah, done yeah. it. Willie yeah. Fieber talked about this. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know, oh. each time was a, a new terror because he had forgotten it so many times. Yeah. See, this Would is you ever I mentally wonder. pick up any communication from them at all? That's Did where this was voice? coming next. Yeah. So <laughs> when I <laughs> thought, when I when they surrounded me and they got into this position, like each position, my feet my, to the left and right side of me, I said, I'm not going to forget this time. And I looked up at the clock, which was, there's like a, you know how they, I don't know how to explain it, but like in the middle of a room that there's a connecting rooms that are open like that. There's like this curved um, arched like walkway kind of thing. It's just open, but it's an arch. There's a clock hanging from that arched walkway or that, that arched, you know, whatever. And it was 11 something at nighttime. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, I'm not going to forget this time. And when I looked back at them, one of them was leaning forward in my face like right here yeah and all i could see my whole vision was, that was the big eyes the face yeah. no the tiny little slit for lips and no ears that i could see just in my face yeah, and in my that. mind huh. yeah this is great guys i can't describe to you the level of fear <laughs> and, and and in my head calmly don't worry we won't hurt you that's right and then i blacked out yeah. And then and then when I when I opened my eyes in a moment, it was 3 30 in the morning. Yep. Mm. That's an average contact, three and a half hours, three hours. Someone it was bizarre, man. That yeah. was bizarre. So So what did you do? I mean, at that point. I never talked about it until I met my fiance. My really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Um so, so I just decided that I don't know. I just again it's it's what am I gonna say? I'm gonna ask you what am I gonna tell? Questions. I wanna know. Because you got the memory going on in their eyes. When you looked into the dark eyes, could you see a pupil at all? I don't you think so. I, I know that I the only thing that I could remember about their eyes was that they were sleek. Like, yeah, yeah, like very sleek. That's the only yeah. thing that I could think of. That's a lens. Just so you know, they can't operate in our uh, place here because any light in the room blinds them i have the same problem they're phot uh, photophobic they candle i have the, the same light coming at yeah. them yeah yeah i have the same and issue. so they wear dark lenses really? especially during the day and especially on craft because there's lights everywhere okay yeah i prefer being in dimly lit rooms which is why my office is like this. i totally understand this, this is another question yeah. i ask contactees do you have light sensitivity very much so yeah, Very much. It's the box, just so you know. It's terrible. You I know. didn't. This is okay. So this is interesting. So analyze me, guy. I mean, by all <laughs> means, like, I'm an open book here, man. Um, yeah. I'm open to any questions you guys have to, that would help me understand, maybe, or even okay, if it's well, just. For let me ask system. you a question. Uh, do you um uh, one of the well? This is I'm talking from knowledge now, okay? And I want to try mm -hmm. to help you with something. The reason that they float or they levitate, and that's a word that you use, levitate, is they're in uh. They're beings that can manipulate light and they can manipulate dimensional space as well. And when they're in phase, they don't touch the ground. They're above it. Um, mm. It's like seeing a ghost walking through the room. Okay. They're not in the yeah. same dimension with you. They're yeah. walking through it. Yeah. That's like they walk through the door. They're not in dimensional space with you. They're in like fourth dimension at that point. Mm. And he, they just walk right on through to you. The reason yeah, I wish they would have just wa like walked or like transformed into a person. He wouldn't, be able to, <laughs> yeah, he wouldn't live five minutes if he came in physically. Not at all. There's no way to describe. Michael Wright. Yeah. Michael Wright asked me. Yeah, I did have sleep paralysis because I couldn't. I could only move my eyes and my head. 
Right. Um, I couldn't get up and my arms were tight to my side, really tight to my side. Yeah, that's so, abject, abject perfect fear, just so you know. It's not sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis is when you go to sleep, your body, your brain produces a hormone that physically paralyzes your body. You can't even open your eyes. You're you're gone. Okay. But the type of paralysis that you're describing is from abject. Fear. I couldn't even think about guys. Right. I couldn't no even think about even running breathe. or getting up or nothing. Right. Like you that. can't breathe. You can't move. No. You're like frozen. No. Yeah. That's perfect yeah. fear. And the reason he got up in your face and said, don't worry, it's okay. Is he knew it. Okay. And he's trying to calm you down. Um, th there was no mean to harm you. He just wanted you to be okay. Well, I don't know if it was a boy or like a male or female. It just well, was I say he, I yeah. touch heat air. Yeah, I was just, just yeah. clear. I wanted to be clear. They're not really he's. Here. They're kind of yeah. it's. That's yeah. an AI, Gray. What you met. No, well, Ricardo's I, I, question here is yeah. one I'm thinking about because this was, you know, did cause you a lot of fear, and yet they didn't actually do anything to you. So why do you suppose I don't there was anything? Yeah, a strong I don't fear know. reaction. There are, if I were to give my opinion, um, this is, you know, I, when I look at the abduction phenomena, I see a lot of uh, different experiences, but there are some, there are some consistence, like uh, or, there's a, there is a persistence among abductees and it's usually that there are medical experiments done and things like that, that are quite painful. Um, I will say that for myself, I don't know if that's what happened to me or if at any point that they mm -hmm. that I may not remember an abduction experience that happened to me. But I think that the fear is I honestly think it's just a natural effect of being around them. Well, I feel like there's something about question. Do you like to be in control of yourself all the time? Dolly. <laughs> <laughs> Who who doesn't? <laughs> no, it's I got a problem. Oh, I, I got a problem. <laughs> no, that's the problem with that. Forget I can you know hear things. Yeah. Okay, that's why. That's why you're in fear when you don't feel like you gave permission for this. You're in your. I didn't. Yeah. Your conscious mind, your physical mind, is different yeah. from your consciousness. This is a computer, and you're indwelling your body to use this computer to move around. Yeah. Okay. You know the the and funny your thing. Your physical is mind has to give permission in your estimation, not your consciousness. They're in contact with your consciousness and your physical mind at the same time. But if your physical mind isn't ready for it or you've locked them out and you're in that much control over yourself, you you people don't realize this. And I'm giving you a big heads up. If you ever have an ET contact ever again um, for any reason whatsoever. I'd prefer not and, to. Okay. <laughs> tell them that. Tell them we're done. No more. And yeah, It's a lack of control. I think that most people have told me yeah. that. that what they really have a hard time with. Yeah. I don't, you know, if yeah, I heard come... some people in the chat saying, Oh, I would love to have that. Ex Listen, <laughs> I, I'm, th I am 35 years old. All right. Yeah. And as a 35 year old adult male, I still, sometimes I have this, like, if they, like there are nights where I, I stay up because I'm going to face them. If they ever come back, I'm going to face you. You're not going to do this to me again, where I'm not aware, not again. Um, and so, that is my mindset where I'll stay up till four or five o'clock in the morning till the light, till the sun comes up because wow. I refuse. I refuse. That explains a lot, too. Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, I know adults who sleep with night lights. <laughs> I do. I listen. I'm, I'm just <laughs> saying, guys. I, like sometimes I'll sleep with the door. The <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I guess what you're going to do a lock. They can walk through the wall. I just I'm just going to face them. They're not going to get me without me facing them that's kind of just how mm -hmm. i feel like i'm gonna look well, at them and you're gonna okay them. now let me ask you a question when you say that to them and they say all right let's have a conversation for five minutes will you say yes <laughs> i don't want to face them <laughs> okay then be very firm and say absolutely not go away. i don't want anything to do okay. with it i mean okay. you know i would prefer that whatever if and I, I have a perspective, Dal. You, you're always trying to educate me on, and challenge my perspective, which I appreciate, by the way. Um, I don't want to be in an echo chamber. I tell my audience this all the time. I want people to tell me I'm wrong because that's how we grow and we learn. And, and if you're always if you're stuck in your own head and I'm one person with my own experiences and my own learning, there are people that have learned a completely different field that I have nothing. I have know nothing about. It takes someone to challenge you from another perspective. Yeah. Well, so I appreciate the opportunity that. Opportunity to, to verify or deny it too. You know, that's the oh, process. Yeah. Line in Sutherland has a kind of interesting question. When these ETs came in, and you say they're hovering, how far yeah. off the ground were they? Well, if I were to guess, if I were to guess, I would say they were about two to three feet off the ground, which is pretty freaking high if you think about it. It was just yeah. like unnecessarily like, why are you floating that high? <laughs> 
Why are you? I, I, I honestly feel like the I feel like the purpose was to put me in a state of mind where I would be most vulnerable in something that shatters your idea of what's possible, what's what reality is like that would throw me off completely. You don't know what to do yeah. in those. You ha, what are you going to, if a lion comes in the room, what are you going to do? Run. You know, you're going to have to run. You got to hide. You got, you, you, you've already imagined like, okay, if I fight a bear right now, this is what, what are you going to do when these creatures that you hear are from outer space and have all this technology come into your room and walk through walls and hover off the ground? What are you going to do? Does anybody have a battle plan for that? Because I don't have an idea. And I think that's the point. The point is to like shatter your defenses. So you don't have a, a response to what's happening to well, you. Well, it's kind of a triple whammy. It's one thing to deal with creatures that you've never seen before. And then they're moving through the wall. That's kind yeah, of that's different. Like, that's, what am I going to do? Okay. <laughs> okay. <it's> a, <laughs> there's a lot going on here. <laughs> yeah, did you ever have I, any paranormal experiences growing up? Where do, you, do you have psychic moments and things like that? Yeah. Or telekinesis oh or anything like that? Oh okay, well, you before you get into that, a silent listener has a question about this experience. Marky, Everybody asked me about smells. Did you smell any odd odors in your dark bedroom before the experiences? No, I don't remember anything. That's the only thing that I can remember is there was there were a couple of times afterwards that I've wondered if I had missing time, but I was too late at night. Maybe I was just tired. I can't I can't put anything to it. That I smelled sulfur, like yeah. that's the only thing. That, like a couple of times throughout my adult life where I smelled sulfur during one of those experiences where I experienced a fear and terror, but I don't know what it was from. I don't have a, 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 any kind of like, Oh, I saw a light. There was nothing. I just smelled sulfur. I thought I went to sleep because when I, you know, I lay down and then, you know, it was a regular night for me. Yeah, um, I'd so say like one or two times. I had by rotten eggs, right? Yeah. Rotten yeah. Eggs. Okay. Yeah. It was strong. It was really strong too. Um, so that's kind of, that's the only thing. But again, those are experiences. I, I got no, real context to what happened around that experience. Hmm. So, All right. and, okay, so, and how old were you for the second one? The second one, I was 23 or 24 years old because okay. that's about the time that I went through the bad period of my life. Okay. Now, when did you... So Robert is asking, let me see. Oh. Let me pull this up. Right. Um, what year was the first and the second event? Oh, my gosh. Uh, I'd have to calculate that. I mean, I would say maybe 2005 was the first event. Anyway, 2003 to 2005 was the first event. And the second event would be about 10 years from today. Well, 12, about wow. 12 years from today. So it's 2023. So 2011. Maybe. I mean, yeah. that's the only thing that's about. I'm, I'm guesstimating here right now. If you guys can see my in real time here, I'm not um, I'm not sure. But I was 23, 24 the second time. I was 11 to 13 the first time. So any and I'm 35 now. And so that's what math I'm working off of. All right. so well, you I mean, you're about the paranormal stuff too, because that comes hand in hand. Yeah, the Second paranormal thing. stuff was more is is much more difficult because, well, the the there's a lot of stuff. But the first, the the most notable ones that I can tell you about are when I was at my grandmother's house in New Jersey around the same around the time that I had that experience. I was there was, I called it a demon, um, but it was a creature that was really tall, really skinny. It had this really sharp teethed grin with these beady little eyes and its legs were bent backwards again it was like muscular skinny type type creature i called it my demon and in that room that i slept in that i told you guys about that had the pullout couch this is hard to describe the layout of this bedroom or, or this house but the again another kind of where the kitchen the the dining room was separated by a hallway an open hallway that led to the side entrance um to the house and then after that was a dining room and then the kitchen and then another living room. And they were all open. It's all open space. But to the left of that, if I were to look down the way, were several openings to another hallway that led to all the bedrooms in the house. OK, this creature would wrap its fingers around each walkway like it would wrap its fingers around the walkway and peer its head with this grin that would just oh, slowly God. creep over. <laughs> and it would it never hurt me. But it would always just peer with just long fingers with fingernails that were really sharp. It would just smile and then grin and look at me with these beady eyes every time I went to the bathroom for weeks. And oh, I would try to creepy. hurry up and it was really creepy. <laughs> and I would try to run to beat it from one side because it would be at the far end of the where the kitchen was. 
So I try to run and beat it. And I don't know how to, this thing was fast. Okay. Yeah. It would just dart. Like it would be there and then it would be all the way up. No noise. No, just boom, be at the other side. And it would slowly creep around and smile like, no matter where you go, I'm right here. You, Almost you like. It? Say, get out of here. I'm going to beat you up or something. Or are you kidding me? I was, I was very young. I was terrified. Now. Mm -hmm. You would think that this would, okay, just a kid that was afraid. Guys. It so had your I'm, number, apparently. Well, <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you yeah. why this was more, this was more troubling than you can imagine. Because a few years ago, I told my daughters about this experience. Ooh, they've uh, seen and it. And they would, they would, worse. So they would tell me, I guess this isn't worse because they didn't see it. They, they they would say, oh, you know, daddy, tell us about your demon again. And I, OK, we're not talking about it. It's it's it just I was a kid or whatever. One day I described this thing to my daughters before. Mm -hmm. One day my daughter comes and yells, daddy, daddy, I found your demon. And I swallowed my heart because <laughs> I oh. thought, oh, my gosh, I brought this thing into my children's life. And my oldest daughter was like, daddy, I found your demon. And she comes in the room and she's like, look. And she shows me on her phone a YouTube video where somebody depicted my demon. Okay. The fast creature, the legs bent backwards, a tall, tall figure, the the beady eyes, the big, the big grin, grin with the sharp teeth. The everything that I described to her was mm -hmm. in a YouTube video decades later. Yeah. Why? Wow. Yeah. I, I don't even know what to. What do you do with that kind of information, right? Because like. Now it's more real than it ever could be. Somebody out there saw the same thing. And so- You know, we live in dimensional space, right? In other words, where we live is 12 dimensions. Right now where you're sitting, and I'm sitting in Presidents, there are 12 dimensions all on top of one another. We're in the same space, but dimed out dimensionally. It's like there's a doorway or a veil between each dimension. We cannot see into the next dimensions but the ones higher than us can see back at us. A yeah. lot of people describe having guardian angels and it's literally beings who are living in dimensional space with you who watch you your whole life and pay attention to you. And they interact with you sometimes when they think you're in trouble and they will try to help you. If they I reject, I used to reject that idea. And then I came across someone who I trusted, mm -hmm. um, who was this? And I'm a, I'm a guys. Listen, I, I know we're talking about these weird right. experiences, but like, I'm a I'm a pretty grounded individual when it comes to my perspective of reality. Not so much anymore, um, <laughs> but because I see that it's much more weird than you think yeah. it is. So when it, it took me, it took a lot to tell oh, angels or what. Come on, like get out of it. What are you talking? This is just wishy washy. Then I talked to somebody who provided me with very compelling information, right? And undeniably there are there are there's an entire other realm that exists right here right we just it's don't so see it we're, we're right next to one another yeah. <laughs> now let me let me make the case for you the reason you see it is because you are psychic you're uh, more open than you were when you were younger you're having experiences and you're actually able to see it it probably grins at you because you see it Okay, it's like it hey, didn't hurt me either. It didn't hurt me, by the way. No, of just, course not. They yeah. won't. They can't. They physically yeah. cannot harm you at all. Well, this is something all contactees go through because once yeah. your contactee it opens your psychic abilities and you start seeing shadow people, right. having yeah. about experiences, precognition, right. medium. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. The uh, there was I did have I did I don't know if you know people can talk again, guys. I just want you to hear me out here, okay. I was in the corporate world. I was a multi-unit manager. I was in business. I was a salesperson. I was, you know, I was the guy that had it all under control. Dolly, you probably can see it before I ever said anything. And so, because Dolly, she pegged me from the first conversation. <laughs> and it's bizarre when somebody does that because it's almost like they have insight into you and you never told them. So I was that guy. Like, to, for me to look into these kinds of phenomena, I, I rejected cryptids. I rejected Bigfoot. I rejected a, 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 if there are aliens, I don't, what does it matter? I got things to do. Right. Like You're that's what back. I thought, even right. with my experiences, I thought that, right. but right. again, it's, I have a feeling that we're all going to be exposed to these phenomena in the very near future. And I think people are going, that's the ontological shock that's being talked about by um, government officials. And I think you need to pay attention to what's going on right now by 
by people far more credible than myself, far more educated and intelligent than myself. And I, th and again, I, I believe you should probably be uh, looking into that stuff. Right. For yeah, we have a, our magnetosphere is going down and it's letting in a lot more energy than we're used to. And people are waking up. This is a time where people would be waking up whenever there's a yeah. calamity or catastrophe coming. People intuitively pick up on it and they start developing rapidly, sort of offset what's going on to prepare. Lots of people are sleeping every night and knowing something's coming. They're just not quite yeah. sure what it is. And yeah. yes, your abilities wake up and then you start seeing things that are actually here with us in this dimensional space. And you're going, oh my God, what is this? And it's gonna get it's gonna get a little hairy scared for some people because <laughs> some people, you know yeah. what you're looking at, it could put you off a little bit, you know? I'm ready. I'm ready because yeah. you know I, I I feel like I'm I am at a point, Dolly, where even with the fear, I'm ready. I'm ready to face because what are we going to do, guys? What are you going to do? You have to face it. Right. Um, well, you're not going to be able to. Much more healthy. We didn't come here to have it easy at all. <laughs> we came here to learn and experience things, but better and different. And uh, we all will leave here. That's a fact. Okay. One, yeah. One way or the other. Everybody. And uh, once you face that about yourself and about what's going on around you, you, uh, you learn to gauge your responses to things. You learn to perceive them a little bit more emotionally, what's the word, maturely, you know, mm, count to yeah. 10, you take a deep breath, you go, okay. Courage, have this? courage. You have yeah. to be courageous. Yeah. Uh, you have to we have to take a quick station break here. Okay. So hold on for one second. I just yeah. want to let everyone know you're listening to The Light Gate. I'm your host, Preston Dennett. My lovely co-host is... I do that all the time. Dolly Safran. <laughs> <laughs> and our, our guest today is the wonderful Marquise Williams. And we are streaming live on the United Paranormal Radio Network, 107.7 from the beautiful city of New Orleans. Also the UFO Paranormal Radio Network at 105.3. We're on a number of other platforms, YouTube, uh, Facebook, and Roku. I think it is. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Thank and this is episode number 13. And I know you guys have some questions and we're trying to get to them as we go. But yeah, Marquise has quite a number of stories to share. And I want to hear more about the paranormal stuff. Like, have you had precognition? Because you know, I've had a lot of witnesses tell me, oh yeah, I could feel them coming. And when you said that, I'm like, mm, I bet he's had more precognitive events. I have. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm curious about that because I experienced that a lot when I started having out of body experiences. And, um, yeah, I would love to hear some of your precognitive stories. Yeah, I could. Are we are we going to? Because I can tell them right now. But if you're going to break, no, by all no, means, no, that, that was the break. That oh, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, there are a couple of and just I want people, please, audience, listen, and I and you know I just want you to understand. Again, I I. I rejected these experiences for a long time because I don't want to believe that they're anything but um, they're not worth even mentioning. Uh, that's what I thought. But again, the more that I learn, the more people I talk to, the more people that educate me on these things, the more I realize they are of the utmost importance. So let me begin with uh, when I first started to do to or mess with the uh, I, I hate to say that, the, the, some very interesting uh, phenomena, like, for example, out of body experiences. I was practicing for quite some time um, how to go out of my body. And one day I finally achieved that experience. And it was the coolest thing at first. So <laughs> I was laying down in that. In that it's, again, this is all in New Jersey, just so you guys understand. This is a, the oddest thing is a lot of things happen in New Jersey. I was laying in bed and I was practicing and doing the meditation practice, the exercises, the vibrations, you know, the vibrational energetic work from my energy body. And then I finally sat up. Cool. It was like my body floated because instead of moving your physical body with your muscles, it's hard to explain, but it's like you intend your body to get up instead. Right. So I finally sat up and I opened, I kept saying, open your eyes, open your eyes, open your eyes. And I opened my eyes and then I could see, and I turned my head around without moving my body. And I mean, like, this is so weird. 360, like, you know, 360 without moving my body. <laughs> and there I was laying down. It was so creepy. So, and I wasn't scared. I wasn't, I just was like, wow. 
But then I turned back around really fast. Like my head just snapped back in front of me, right? Like this. So I'm looking ahead and I could see for miles. If I wanted to look like 20 miles down the road, I could just see. I could just see all the way through it. The sky was as clear as it's ever been. I could see all the stars in the sky. Everything was just so clear. And I was like, oh my gosh, I did it. Like I'm doing it. <laughs> and then wow. when I said that, all I heard was like the sound of a thousand voices. It was like the whole world was screaming everywhere all at once. And it freaked me out. So oh. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But yeah. it didn't end there. Because when I went back to my body, finally, because the screaming was freaking me out, I, I got my, my body, my actual body, you know, woke up. And when I looked down at the foot of my bed, there's a hooded shadow figure. And instead of being scared and like, I just said, who are you and what are you, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing? And it was almost like it, it, it like urged me to go back, like lay back down, go to sleep. Didn't say anything. It just stood there, just staring at me, shadow hooded shadow figure. And then I just laid down and went to sleep. Have I, wow. And then when I got up, I heard an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the middle of the woods, guys. Where yeah. the heck does this ambulance? You got you got to understand. We're in the middle of nowhere. It's like a twenty minute drive to civilization or houses. Right. I, I I we hear an ambulance coming from the most desolate part of the road. Like there's five different directions. The most desolate part, an ambulance is coming from that direction. I get up for some strange reason. And I go in the kitchen. My grandfather's in the kitchen. My grandmother gets up. She comes to the kitchen. My cousin gets up. She comes to the kitchen and my uncle comes into the house and comes in the kitchen and we're all standing there, not saying a word, hmm. just staring at, in, in different directions, just staring. And then all of a sudden the ambulance passes and then we all just like do our own thing. My uncle makes a sandwich. My grandfather gets a drink. I go back to bed. My cousin goes back to bed. My grandmother goes back to bed. The next morning I, I was like, I told my cousin, man, this is when I was a kid, so I was living with my grandmother. I said, I saw a shadow at the a hooded shadow at the foot of my bed. And she casually says, eh, Grandma saw a light uh, uh, angel floating above her bed last night. I was like, No way, you're lying. <laughs> my wow. grandmother gets up and she said she woke up and there was an angel, a, a light, right. a light being hovering above her head. My grandmother is a Christian woman. Okay. We're talking mm -hmm. church every Sunday. God loves you. You know, she's a Christian woman. Right. She said she saw an angel whatever you know light whatever that was um and i saw a shadow but like it just was such a weird experience you all all going on. yeah well yeah. you 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 um how do i put it you amp things up every time you practice being psychic or doing out of body any anything this you know psychic you using your consciousness at all yeah. it amps the air up it amps all the you know everything, the magnetic resonance of the house, it all just all goes up. And it's not just you, you're affecting, you're affecting everybody else in the house. And it's like opening the door for everything to come in. And that's why other people saw what they saw. You actually opened the door. I wish I could get like, sometimes I wish I could just get my family, my, my family in Jersey to get together and talk about that night. You should. For, for like a corroboration because... It's been so long record since we it. talked about it. Yeah, yeah, tape it, record it, you know? Yeah. Those are things, those are things, good things to remember. When I was growing up, every time the psychic ability was encouraged in my home, okay? My mom didn't like it, but it was encouraged. My father especially encouraged it, and so did my great-grandmother, who I was raised with. And um, when something happened, we would all sit down and talk it through. What did you see? What happened? What are we doing? And then we would practice talking to one another psychically. My mom could call my dad before he was he was miles and miles and miles away. And she'd tell him, don't forget this. And he'd come home and say, look, I remembered for you. You know, things like that. Just weird things. We practiced communicating psychically with one another. It was a, an encouraging thing. And I wish more people would think to even try it. Because you've got young kids in your house, right? Yeah, yeah. They're psychic little beings right now. You haven't discouraged them, right? No, I teach them. I teach yeah. them techniques to try so to be more intuitive. With them. Yeah. Yeah. I love your psychic stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Everybody I want to pop up another it. question. This one is a good one. This is from Robert Allen Yaffe. And I like this question because this is a pattern I've noticed. I interviewed a guy who had a major UFO encounter. I said, anything going on that was major before that? And he's like, oh, I was having this huge breakup with my girlfriend. <clears throat> 
Another lady I interviewed, Geneva, so funny. <laughs> was having a so funny. <laughs> real low point in her life That's when so funny. she went out and had this <laughs> major. This is, these are the moments that make so, me feel like this is more. It makes everything more real for me because I can. Yeah. So Robert Allen, yeah. Yaffe's question is: Did you have significant events preceding these encounters? My father passed away the first time, and I, I had a divorce the second time. I figured I might as well just be honest with you guys. I was going through a divorce the second time which is why I was staying at my cousin's house. So one of the worst times of my life, guys. I mean, it was terrible. Yeah. I was distraught. I was in a very bad place. So, so do you feel like sense. somebody was trying to tell you something or trying to, <laughs> you know, guide you? in you know, a my, my, everybody, everybody that I've met, even my children asked me, did they change me? You know, did they make me this way? You know what? When I was younger, I was a, a complete idiot. <laughs> I was not very bright. Um, I wasn't very bright at all. And then, you know, I just went on this path afterwards to meditate and to learn about myself and to read and study and educate myself. And I'm talking years. Like, hey, that's all I cared about was trying to understand what's going on. And it just carried. It's just one of those behaviors that carried on forever. And, um, yeah, I I changed. The first time was the, was like I woke up, like my whatever I was supposed to do in terms of searching i started then the first time the second experience was when i realized that i needed it to be i needed to change my life in a different way which literally led me to this so i, I could i could attribute each one of those encounters to where why i'm here today i don't know i'm not i'm not gonna i don't really know to be honest but at least i can say that my father died the first time that's when i had the experience and the second time um i was going through the, the divorce that makes sense. You know, when I had my first real out of body experience, I was so depressed. My mom had passed away some couple of years earlier, but I just couldn't get over it. Yeah. And that's when I finally had it. And it, and it helped for sure. Yeah. Sent me on a quest. There, there are many catalysts in life that spring us forward, even here amongst ourselves. There, people can say, well, this person affected me and it changed my life. That person, some of us have. It is affecting us and changing our lives because they see that we're on a path and they're encouraging us to go to it, you know? And I don't know, you keep asking yourself, why am I doing what I'm doing? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Is this what they want me to do? And the simple answer would be absolutely yes. You know, spread the yeah. truth. Tell the I truth. Saw, I saw a Sean Cahill, and this is the kind of, this is the kind of person that would convince me that I'm not like, this isn't just wishy-washy, right? Because I, I hear a lot of people that I feel like they experience stuff, but like, maybe not me. Like I, when I listen to your story, I'm like, yeah, Dolly can because she's awesome. I'm just a dude, right? But like, when I think about, when I think about somebody who would make me think that I could also be, like, these are real to me. It's right. somebody like Sean Cahill. We're talking a, you know, a military, ex-military guy, veteran, um, respected, intelligent, very intelligent guy. If I were to, let's just put it this way, if I were to kick back and, you know, I don't drink beer, but I drink wine. Let's say he, he has a beer and I drink, you know, drinking a little wine or something like that. We would have philosophical conversa conversations for hours on end. I could see it. And he talks about bending spoons. Why? You know, like, <laughs> why would he do that? You know, this is a guy that's involved with the Nimitz encounter. Why would a guy of that caliber be doing talks on bending spoons? Because yes, he can. again, there's something there. Yeah, there's something there. Going on. We are all exactly. I, this is one of my pet peeves about life here on this planet. We are all the same. Every last one of us. We are no different from each other at all. And we have unbelievable locked up potential inside ourselves. We have greatness. Each one of us across the planet, the globe, in the universe. We're awesome. And all we have to do is let it out. You know, work it. And nobody's yeah. anybody better than anybody else. I'm just a person, just like everybody else. Yeah, but you've had some really fantastic experiences. I mean, seriously, I I, I don't want them because I, I I don't think I would be I'm the right person to yeah. have those experiences. I have a reason. You want to know what the reason is? Honest to goodness, this is my last time here. I'm done. I, I came here for this. I'm doing <laughs> I ain't going back to this. <laughs> I'm not coming back. I'm going, so you know, done. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's ironic it because, like, yeah. because like you have these these very intimate encounters with beings. Preston is a prolific writer, and like together. Oh my gosh, the power yeah. you guys you have in this him? world. They, they told me to go talk to him. 
No I'm way. not kidding you. They told me, gave me, made me write his name down because I'm not good. Yeah, I, I watch you, Preston. I, I, I because I want to learn about the encounters, and you do all. You have so many videos about encounters, 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 encounters. Right. If anybody's gonna, <laughs> yeah, I, I got to tell you guys, if you want data points on encounters, you got to follow this channel because I need like this is the kind of place that I go to when I want to learn about all the abduction experiences and the encounters and the healing. What's what's I, I it's like a research resource for me for abduction experiences or contact experiences. I know people don't like the word abduction. You call it what you want to, right. but it's that's where, contact. this is where I go. It's just that. plain and simple contact. <laughs> abduction is a negative word that you've been taught to use and it's wrong. It is absolutely wrong. Erase it from your memory. You are not being abducted. You're being contacted. I'll work on just that. Like, <laughs> just like if you were to meet somebody on the street and want to help yeah. you out of nowhere, that's a contact. You're being contacted. Whether it's from a being from there or somebody here, it's all contact. We're communicating with one another. It's pure yeah. communication. Well, and, well, I appreciate what you said, Marquise, because that's exactly why I do that. Because people don't have a recourse right. or a resource. And there's so much disinformation out there. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I really. It's important, man. I think what you're doing is, you know, the first time I, I was just so, I, I appreciate that you even gave me the time of day. I, when I was a literal nobody, which I still. I tell myself I'm nobody, but I can't do that anymore because people no. do notice me now, right? Yeah. When I was a nobody, nobody. I watch you, Marquise. I watch you all the time. I watch you on Dave's channel. I watch you when you're interacting. I listen to what you say. I listen to a lot of people. Okay? We're all of somebody. We're all an integral part yeah. of this universe. Right. We, I believe the same thing. the ability to yeah. bring points out to people that nobody else would think of. Different true. perspectives, yeah. Perspectives yes. or people need. I think every we all have our audiences, and each one of our audience members wants something right. different from you know. It's they don't go to, and not everybody is going to everybody, right? right? They go to each person because it resonates with them, and we all are like a beacon for different people in this in this world, right? So exactly. Well, I'm going to pop up another question because okay. I like this one from Magnus Zetterquist. <clears throat> have you developed the ability to heal or predict the future? We've talked a little I wish. bit about cognition, but healing I will is tell a you, yeah. So I will tell you this, and it's ironic because I rarely ever get sick, <laughs> ever. Um, I have gotten sick, just yeah. to be clear. It's just really rare. And I mean, like, really rare. I, I don't know about healing other people, but in terms of myself, um, yeah, the, the irony is that is though that I do have health issues. Like I'm still a human being. I'm not like a God here, guys. Right. But when I mean right. heal, what, what I mean by heal is like in terms of the everyday average sicknesses that people go through, like, why, like, how are people always sick all the time? I don't get those kind of sick, like colds and stuff like that. Or like, I don't know. I just don't, I don't get them. Um, and when I do, they last for maybe 24 hours and I'm, I'm fine. It just, it's the oddest thing. I will say this. When it comes to the precognition or the clairvoyance, if you will, uh, which kind of encapsulates, it kind of it umbrellas a lot of different phenomena with those psychic abilities. I used to be able to, and, and I, I guess there's a remnant of it in my, in my conscious experience. I used to be able to dream about people. And I would, I would think about someone before I went to bed or if I wanted to know something about someone, I would dream about them. And, and it would be like a story would unfold that would answer my question about that person. And it was never wrong, never wrong. It just was, it just so turned cool. out. And I would try to tell people about certain things. And, and especially at first it was like, oh, I got to tell them. And they would be so angry yeah. because first of all, I'm not supposed to know that stuff. And secondly, who am I to tell them about themselves? And it's not like, oh, you need to be a better person. No, just like, yeah. listen, I, I'm, I've been thinking about you and I think, you know, is there so, you know, something that is going on? You want to talk to me about, if you want to talk on here, they would talk and then I would give them what my dream would kind of the information that they would give me. And that's where it went wrong, where people would, would, would reject what I had to say because they weren't ready to hear it. And again, I'm not talking about like telling people how to live their life. That's not what I'm talking about. It's like telling them about something they need to be aware of right. something that they're having a problem with. I don't know. And, and I would have insight into their problems. <laughs> This is going to sound stupid. I'm going to sound like an a-hole right now <laughs> um, because you think about it like, oh, you know what's going on. No, I just would I would dream about them or I would dream about whether or not somebody was safe to be around. And tapping, that's what they call ET calls tapping. You're on the surface. You're going in the surface of who they are. You're visiting them 
and you're feeling what's going on with them and you're tapping them and yeah. their consciousness is telling you what's going on. And then you go back with the information. That's well, I turned it off. I turned it off. You did? It inter yeah, because it, it interferes with my life, man. I mean, I you, you can't like, you know, you go through your life, you have these experiences and then you have to live life too. You have to live yes. the civilian, you know, the everyday yeah. life. Why? Mm -hmm. it, it, it was such an, you know, it would interfere with my relationships to the point where oh. it would ruin them. And so I need, I needed to, them to stop. I needed them to stop so I can just be normal so that I can have a life and, and fit in and not be so odd for one. Um, because I was a bit odd because I looked deeper into things and people ask questions. I, I didn't like small talk. I like to get really deep into to conversations <laughs> with people. Yeah. Yes. That's hard at parties, isn't it? <laughs> it's hard at parties. So I know what do you think about me? The, the, the funny thing is I had to learn how to be a regular person. Now it's like people people say, oh, man, you're so easy to talk to. I love being around you. You're so much fun. It's like that's not who I really am. Who I really am is the guy that, that gets you to tell me about your whole life, your whole life right. problems and your experiences. And, and who are you? What do you think you are? What do you think about the universe? What do you think about God? Like, is there, do you believe in life? That's the kind of, and I don't mean those exact questions, but those are the kinds of directions that my conversations go in naturally. Yeah, and so contact you just, yeah, you know, that. <laughs> that, that's number one. I grew up with the same problem. I had a really hard time with friends and being public and stuff. Because yeah, but people don't like that. that. People don't like no. that because it's the same no. reason why I turned it off or the same reasons why people didn't like it because they have to live their life and these questions divert them from living their normal, you know, civilian yeah. lives. I should say. Uh, well, I'll tell you where life. I learned it from. I learned it from ET. My contact with them, being with them all the time, taught me to think that way. Literally taught me to think that way mm -hmm. from a very early age. So I don't have conscious that. recollection, so I don't know no. how I got that. I don't I know what's going on with that. Well, that brings up this question from Jay Yarbrough Music. Marquise, why don't you want to do hypnosis? Because I heard about wh what happened to Whitley Strieber. I heard about <laughs> what happened to Terry Lovelace. Um, I heard about what happened to the thousands of abductees uh, throughout the, the last hundred or so years. And I'm not interested in, uh, in, in if those experiences happened to me in recalling them. Well, what if it's something amazing, like they took you to another planet or they yeah, healed you or I they. I think if it were, I wouldn't be. As, I think that a part of me knows. Because that's entirely that, possible. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is very possible. It's, I think it's unlikely, though, at least for myself, because um, the nature of the of the that the contact phenomena is one of of a traumatic um uh, aftermath there's a lot of there's a lot of trauma that's associated with these experiences even if you people you know they did that study where people said there was like five thousand people and most of them said i'd want i don't want to stop them whitley, whitley Schriever, by the way said he wouldn't give it up for the world right. you know like they, 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 let's not get it twisted most, most people want to continue the experiences i want to give you a correlate this isn't telling you to think this way i'm just maybe by way of understanding something as, as a nurse, I deal with patients all the time. And I have people that come in there and they know nothing about medicine, nothing about medical treatment, and they're injured badly. They're in a lot of pain. They're scared to death. And we have to do things to them to save their lives. And yeah. it doesn't matter what we say to them. They're in that state of mind. And short of knocking them out, um, it's an ongoing saga to get cooperation from them so that we can help them. And I mean, I've been bit, kicked, stabbed. And then after afterwards, uh, they try, we, nurses will try to work with the patient to make them understand. They'll tell them every little detail. They'll explain why we're doing this, da, 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 da. Some people totally reject it. And then some people go, oh, I didn't know that. And they become completely calm. They in, start to not enjoy the experience, but at least they're okay because they know it's going to help them and heal them. Okay. I will, I will so, not bring yeah. negativity. Yeah. I will not bring negativity to your channel off off the record. We'll talk about that sometime and I'll okay. explain to you what my position okay. is and why. Because okay. you they, again, you always challenge me. And I that's why I appreciate I get Dolly, you know, you know, I, I, I will talk about that some other time. But I will say okay. that I my perspective is um, painted by different different strokes. Okay. Well, this is one of the big controversies and the real sensitive issues because people f do feel a sense of violation. They feel a complete loss of control. This is not something they asked for, at least not consciously, and that's what matters. I mean, there's a lot going on here, and it absolutely does cause trauma. 
Yeah, I mean, I've read read John Keel's books, man. I've read John Keel's books. I've read David Jacobs books. I've read, um, even if you read Richard Dolan's book, uh, uh, speculative analysis on the uh, alien agenda, there are, there is this, there's a lot more going on than just one thing. And Uh I can, I can, I can say that for myself, I, I personally prefer to be cognizant of a potential problem with some of these beings. And Mm -hmm. that's kind of how I feel. I don't think, I do think that there are some obviously that are good and that want to help us obviously, but I am keenly aware of another um, at least group of them that is not here to help us not to kill us all and eat our, you know, drink our blood. Just just, because if they did want to do that, right. We've been here for quite some time, right. Yeah. No, I get I get a different impression. I think that we have there is a uniqueness to us, regardless of what people say that we're not that special. Well, they wouldn't be interacting with us if we weren't. And so yeah, there's there's an issue on this planet that you might not be very well aware of. And we'll talk about that, too. We'll I'll, I'll give you a heads up to it. It's uh, there. The people that are on this planet have been working for years to make you believe and say just exactly what you did. And they will use mind control. They will use drugs. They will use anything to turn you if they think you're a contactee. And that might be what your problem is. There's no um, doubt evil forces on this planet. Yeah. I can, yeah. I can tell you what. If, 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 ET, if yeah. ET, I think that there is an intelligence that has the power to walk through walls, right. control my cognitive environment, uh, manipulate my perceptions, wipe my memory, right. control, uh, and also give me any kind of experience that it wants to, as well as change my genetics potentially in my biology in my again this these 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 beings can outperform all of our military equipment and they don't even do anything they just show us we can they're just better right they don't have to attack and i think that if they wanted to if they wanted to they would make themselves known tomorrow but they don't and you have to and for myself i have to ask myself this question when 800 million people are suffering from hunger insecurity when 2 billion people are suffering from finance, from, from economic um, depression. And I mean, in terms of whether it be starvation to not having electricity in extreme uh, climate areas and the likes, I feel like if there are, a, if there is a being that can change this, you talk about energy, right? There is a technology that operates off of what people call zero point energy. I don't, I'm not sold on that necessarily, but whatever it is, they can produce the amount of energy that's that's produced from a nuclear power plant in a small 30 foot space without any exhaust, no heat, no heat signature, nothing producing no chemical waste, not no, no, no effect on the environment. They're not tearing a tearing a hole through our uh, atmosphere by traveling, producing 500 G's. They've got something that could revolutionize society, civilization forever. And let me ask and, you a and, question. And I'm going to tell you because I hear what you're saying. You ready for this? I'm ready. Absolutely. Point blank. You have a, put yourself on the other side. You have children living on yeah. a planet that you planted there and you expect them to evolve and reach up to you so that you can gift them with these things. Yeah. And what you see is this, what we're living now as a group together, we cause these problems. We are the, we are the authors sure. of our yeah. existence here. Now, here they are, knowing that if they were to hand any of this to us, we're not mature. We have no reason to be uh, able to handle it without using violence or turning it into something bleak and bad. And until we change ourselves, until we grow up, until we mature, until we understand that peace and love and giving and holding and cherishing and everything else and seeing each other yeah. as helping each other <clears throat> not going to help us not one second and i have the ability to know this because this is what they taught yeah. me it, well, it is I've heard that from other contactees as well it said flat out it's up to you to solve your own problem yeah, i i think i want to i want to respond to uh rad peanut real quick and i want to okay. this is in response to your to what you just said there's there's two things that i want to say about that one me and you both know we might not make it i mean the civilization yeah. is is not doing so well so right. if their the objective is to allow us to to figure it out, we're not going to be able to survive that long if we keep the way that we're going. And I'm talking like, you know, so we're in that's sus- the first unsustainability. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And the second thing is to, to, um, to, that's the, what if we never change Uh red, red peanut, 
there is a clear um, effort to make sure that we never change, whether it be by humans or otherwise. Right. Someone doesn't want us to change, and they are right. using some very interesting methods to make sure that they're, doesn't happen. They're absolutely here. They want yeah. control. Here yeah. we go with that control, mm. ego, being very large. You, you're you're yeah. going to live and die on this planet. No, no, no offense to anybody, but we are born here and we die here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That is a fact. What yeah. you do between those two moments in your life are paramountly up to you. And what everybody on this planet needs to understand is you follow somebody else, you give up your right to make your own decisions. Okay. We all, each of us are autonomous beings. So are ET. And every last one of us must make the decision to evolve, to wake up, to move forward. To I agree. Yeah. Being slaves to yeah. somebody else or guinea pigs or whatever you want to call it. The minute we do that on mass in this planet, you will see things change rapidly because yeah. that kind of energy elevates you. In yeah, a matter I think of this is exactly why people are being contacted because the whole era, the modern age of UFOs yeah. coincides with the atomic age when we had that ability to completely destroy everything. And that's right. when they came down en masse and said, wake up. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. Um, I will say this. If you if you if you guys agree, if audience, if you agree with Dolly and Preston, I would say don't listen to me with this with this issue, with this specific thing. You gotta ignore me because I'm not no, an optimist. Not, <laughs> no, no, I, <laughs> I don't discount what you say in the very least, not at all. No. Because you're, you're on a quest all to voices need to be heard. Yeah. Right. It's so your job to figure this out. Literally. It is. I agree. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm bringing up another question because we have like 20 minutes left and I want to get through it's a ironic many as we can. And Magnus Zetrikvist is asking, have these experiences, I'm assuming, um, inspired you to turn vegetarian or become environmentally aware? Yes. And ironically, I wouldn't, I don't know about vegetarian because I do milk and stuff like that, but I, I'm actually on a liquid diet and I have been for almost two years now. Wow. Oh, wow. Um, so I, I mean, I eat soups of, of course, but like the only thing that I would touch that's even solid at all would be mashed potatoes. So yeah. Um, well, I'm a yeah. mashed potato freak. I love mashed yeah, potatoes. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And another from Magnus. He's got a lot of them. Owls. <laughs> so I haven't seen any owl, like the owls in the window and the, the owls that are size of humans, right? The freaking human size owls. <laughs> haven't, haven't seen anything like that before that I can remember. No, no. Okay. Here's another one from Robert Allen Yaffe. And I'm thinking this applies to your interesting childhood question. experience yeah. because that yeah. this came at 930, which mm -hmm. is, you know, over an hour ago when you were yeah. talking about seeing the beam of light come down. Um, did, did you feel static electricity? The, that's a really interesting question. So, like, there's this feeling that there's a you're inside of an an area of space that's like different. Um, there's something there's something different, like a shift or whatever. Um, and that there's a blue tint to everything. You know, like I I keep saying bubble, but I don't know if it's an actual shape of a bubble. I just call it a bubble. But it surrounds the entire immediate area that you're in. Yeah, that's it what it feels like. So you thick, can, right? it's like it's thick. It's like looking like, at everything opaque through that blue light. Yeah, right? yeah, that's yeah. And I thought that it was an ambient light. I thought that it was just yeah. an a blue ambient light. No, you're in phase. You're absolutely out of the dimensional space you're in. You've actually been brought into phase with them. You're so, outside. Space so what inspired you, Marquise, to sort of open up and start talking about this and going, you know, doing podcasting and? It's going to be interesting to hear. <laughs> You want to know what inspired me, guys? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Lou Elizondo. Uh, when I saw a guy of that caliber, again, I, I speaking from a position of a veteran, right? I, the, when I see a guy like that who has the cred the credentials and the intelligence and the 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 way that he talks about the phenomena, um, where and, and also humanity, where he has this hope for humanity being able to handle the truth. He has this hope that we will see it for what it is versus versus taking one perspective. Versus, he actually says, Elizondo gave this idea that the, that the Pentagon thinks they're demons. Some people in the Pentagon think they're demons or the DOD or whatever. But like, that's just an old paradigm. That's a that's a religious paradigm that they hold. We don't know what it is. And then he gives a scientific alternative to it. This could be something from another dimension. It could be beings from, you know, it could be, but extraterrestrial, that's not the only, there's something much more dramatic or I should say more exotic going on here. And to think a little bit wider or broader about the phenomena. But 
that's what got my attention explaining what these craft are doing giving a name to the to the phenomena that we see in the skies and characteristics of their flight patterns that's the kind of thing that i want that i can use in a conversation and so i knew okay there's information i can use to talk about what i i know is going on now and then there was a, I, I i learned about you know from him to christopher mellon it's like holy crap guys christopher <laughs> mellon are you kidding me <laughs> we're, we're not talking about like some kook out there who by the way might be telling the truth by the way if you see a crazy person who's like <laughs> the aliens i've seen them they might be telling the truth they just they're just crazy like they're also crazy so it's not that they're not credible it's just you can't use that as a reason to say there's something else in our reality that's what did it for me yeah. And then seeing on seeing that there was legislation coming through, seeing the DOD's assessment on UAP, that was it. I, I knew it was time. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to embrace this and I want to talk about it. And uh, so I just started this this path now like this from that from that. Yeah. That's awesome, actually. You know, that, that that's absolutely awesome. I wish everybody had that idea. You know, I really do. So those two major encounters you described are those the only ones that you are aware for, of for UAP for UFO? the aliens for UFOs and alien extra you know non-human intelligence now they call them whatever the grays are the only ones that I saw that experience was the only thing that I had that I can remember I can't remember anything else that I can think of in terms of the the UFO and the alien experiences uh, when it comes to the paranormal stuff. Um, there are plenty, but when it comes to the most notable ones that I have vivid rec recollection of, the ones that I told you about are the, the most uh, vivid ones. And then the the clairvoyance, if you will, to, to kind of blanket over psychic phenomena, the dreaming was the only other thing. I always, I, you know, you get feelings, but everybody gets feelings. But I have a very good sense of certain things, certain things about people, about, you know, people. Right. I also have this ability to recall information in a very unique way. In a very unique way. How so? <laughs> you're, so you're talking to somebody with the same problem. Go ahead. So <laughs> there, there is a technique that I use for for mostly for reading, but also for information. I got it from a from a guy named Paul Sheely and mm -hmm. another guy named uh, Win Wenger. They're both educated. They're both uh, accelerated learning specialists who teach people techniques to, to adults, techniques to help them relearn how to learn mm -hmm. through hypnosis and, med and meditations and, and, and uh, things like that. And I use their technique where they take a book. Um, I don't have Michael Masters' book over here, but I take a book, they turn it upside down and backwards. And then you look at the book and you try to see both pages. And the focal point that you use is a way to bypass the conscious mind's desire to want to read every single word. And then oh, I wow. flip through each page and then I'd say a, I say a cadence and I, and I do it at a very even pace. One, two, three, four, relax, recall. And I just hypnotize myself into this cadence and I do it backwards, forwards, backwards again, three times. Um, and then I put the book aside. I close my eyes and then I see the book in front of me. Yep. And then that's if I, works. and then that's how you kind of do this, this yeah. technique. I did it. I, yeah. I take memory. Yeah. Yep. Well, when I went to art class, that's what they had us do. They had us turn the no pictures upside down and you know, draw it upside down. You could draw much better because you, your mind sort of paints over what you think it looks like. Wow. Yeah. Instead of, yeah. Instead of actually seeing it. Well, your eyesight, your yeah. eyes actually see everything upside down. Your brain yeah. flips it, it over. It. So yeah. if you flip it over, your brain is having to immediately pay attention to every little detail of it because it's trying to make the flip again. Yeah. And you're holding it in stasis, and that's why it goes straight into your that's mind. That's so interesting, Marquise, because yeah. so many contactees I talk to have some really interesting memory things going on. Yeah, <laughs> I do a lot of techniques. I do a lot. Of, I like to have fun with visualization, especially. Um, but it only works for information. Like, I'm not a genius. I just, like, information just is easier for me to comprehend and understand because I, I have a process. I have a process. Right. Okay, I'm going to bring on a little bit of a non sequitur question that's bring goes us back to the creepy entity that we saw. Because yeah. when you're describing that, I'm like, well, gosh, you know, that doesn't sound like an ET. You know, the tall thing with the yeah. backwards knees. And oh yeah, creepy, I don't know what the freak that thing is. <laughs> I mean, I, that sounds to me like some 
low level spirit, but I don't know. But well, keep I in mind the question know, is could this be an entity that feeds on fear? I will give you a very short version of what I think. I think potentially, but I will say that the phenomena, and when I say the phenomena, I mean UFOs and extraterrestrial or non human intelligence, has been associated with cryptid encounters throughout history. Fairies, for example, there is a rich history of fairy lore that talks about these fairies that used to essentially take children from local tribes and then they'd return them, of course, but they would take them. And then they would talk about these bizarre experiences with fairies, which were just essentially orbs, um, if you will. Um, there is a rich history of that. I think that I, I honestly just think that these are all byproducts. I think they're all byproducts of the phenomena. And I think it's all the same thing. I do not think that there is a separation between what we call cryptids, if you will, and the UFO phenomena. I don't think there's a separation. They may seem that way. And this is my perspective, by the way. This is not the gospel. Um, but I think that if you look at the history of, of, of contact with not with this other phenomena other than the reality we experience every day, it's all connected in some way. In some way, it's all connected. So, yeah. Well, I certainly get that question a lot, and I totally agree. I'm kind of on the other end there. I think we are dealing with extraterrestrials. I think Bigfoot's a Bigfoot. I really do. Oh, I think <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, but I just don't know what that is. What, is, it, is it theirs? You know, is it theirs? The universe. Everything is related to everything. We all, if you're alive and breathing, you have DNA. And yeah. all, every entity in existence has DNA and it's all related DNA. We're all related to one another. It's the same kind of life existence DNA. And um, we just know it. We're all part of the same thing. Um, the third dimension here where we're all stuck right now is a place for us to come and learn and employ what we learn mm. so that when we leave this dimension and go back out, we've take, we're taking with this personal, employable existence understanding of what it is we already know. In source, you know everything. But yeah, how do you use it if you don't know what it means or how it exists? So we come here to employ that and then take it back with us. It's important to understand that, you know? It really is. I mean, you can't, here, here you are, in, well, I'll give you for instance, here you are in source, right? And you don't really have a body. You can think about anything you want to. You can do anything you want to. You have, you're capable of almost being able to create things. And yet, how do you do that? You don't know. And you don't know what will happen, you know, because the pendulum swings both ways and the pins fall down and the, the ripples go through the water. Those are all things that we learn here to make us understand for every action there is an equal or opposite reaction. And we have to learn that before we employ it. And you can't do that without this experience, period. At all. Okay. I'm bringing up yes. another question. What's up, Michael? <laughs> hey, Michael. Hi, Michael. <laughs> Michael Kennedy has a great question, and I certainly have thoughts on what are the group's thoughts on the upcoming congressional hearings? <laughs> I will let you start, Marquise, unless you want me to. <laughs> or I've, been, I've, I've spoken about it exhaustively, but I'll tell you this. Um, I'll be live streaming it. I hope you guys will be too. Um, I will say this. I I think that the people behind this hearing, Tim Burchett, Luna, and, and you know, all of the all of the the players in the field know what they're doing. Um, they recognize that they can't do the same thing this dog and pony show that they did the day before. They can't keep doing the carrot on a stick. They're facing opposition from the Pentagon, the DoD, and Air Force generals at you know, uh, Air Force bases. Um, I think they recognize that if they do the whole, well, I can't tell you any more than I've already told you, it will set this whole process back. And I think we are in for a very big surprise. But I will tell you, none of you will, will learn any, anything that's new because we're already involved in this topic. We are going to get confirmation of things that we, that we thought were true. We heard about Grapevine, um, their speculation and lore. We're going to hear some stuff there that is going to confirm definitively what we've suspected. This hearing is not just for us. It's mostly for the general public to become more aware of these topics and to make it real for them because it's still, there are still people who don't even know who David Grush is. They don't know who Russ Coltart is. They don't know who Lou Elizondo is. They don't know about the DOD publishing a UAP assessment uh, two years ago, three years ago. They don't know. Uh, two years ago, sorry, now. They don't know. And they don't know about David Fravor and Ryan Graves. So I think that this is going to be one of those things that... Um, definitively turns the tide of what's happening right now with disclosure. 
I love it. Yeah, I sure hope so. But having been in this field for 35 plus years, I'm a little jaded because it's been yeah. only recently there's been any movement at all. And when that Pentagon, you know, there was that first congressional hearing and they're like, have you ever shot at UFOs? And they both said, you know, Moultrie and Daly said, oh, no, we've never shot. Them. Well, that it's was a lie. It was a lie. Or yeah. a flat out lie. And do you know about Malmstrom? No, we have no reporting. Huh? What, what's, uh, what's that? What is Malmstrom? So uh, yeah. I, I think the best <clears throat> thing we're seeing from this is that it is bringing a lot of people into awareness of this subject. And it is a step forward. And that's great news. So I don't, I, I just don't trust our government. I'm sorry, I don't. And I don't I blame should, you. I, I won't say Congress so much, but the secret governments. I feel like it's all so tightly controlled, but I'm super excited to see what comes of this. And I hope that more people wake up and just have say enough is enough. You really want to hear what I have to say? <laughs> <laughs> Do we? <laughs> Uh, I want to take everybody into reality for a second, all right? They've been about this business for a long time, uh, over 80 years. Technology is a lot more advanced than the human humans know. They've back-engineered quite a bit. Uh, they are understanding of factors that you are unaware of, and they know exactly who ET is. They know exactly what's going on, and they have known. They have an agenda, and you are being duped period, the end. This is not going to help you. It is not going to teach you anything new. It is going to be a false flag. They are walking you slowly into believing that ETs are out to get you. I want to drag you to Snowden. He stated point blank, has the evidence showed it? They want him dead for this reason. They have nothing to do with ETs. ETs have nothing to do with them. There's no cooperation between ET and any world power, anybody. The only people ET shows themselves to are everyday people like you and me. They have shown themselves repeatedly. We have disclosure. It's already here. And what you're going to watch is a dog and pony show to make you believe that you're in danger. This is national security. They have a space force. And the agenda is seriously not pretty. And I'm not going to say it right now. I don't have to. Too many people have heard me talk. <clears throat> I hope and you're right. I understand that when you hear them talking, to listen carefully to every word they say and measure what they say. I hope Dolly is right. Yes. I'm going to say this right now because Dolly, it would be better to have to face the, the powers of this world than that of the others. So I hope you're right. Correct. You're exactly right. And and here's the other one. They are not here right now. That's why they're getting away with this right now. That's why everything is suddenly happening very rapidly. It isn't us bringing it out. It's timing bringing it out because we have serious things, ramifications happening all around us. And they now know ETs are not here for reasons. And they are amping up because now they can get away with it. We've been protected largely by ET for many, many centuries, eons even. They've been in our lives for longer than any of us know, iterationally longer. And uh, this is their time to have at us. And I want you to remember what I said. Think I'll remember. <laughs> Absolutely. And do your homework. Study the science of what I say is going on. It is. It's right there before you. Please don't blind yourself to it. We have a lot of decisions to make, and one of them is, how are you walking off this planet? Because it's coming, period. And they know it, and they're going to save themselves. We are nothing to them, period. So, no Also, offense. expect expect a surprise witness uh, as well. Yeah, I know. They have. I know. I know. I know. Okay. Yeah, sure. It, it, Mark my words. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm not as jaded as you guys are. Just so yeah. you, I, I'm so glad that, like, I came in at this time. Yeah. Because I wonder how I would feel if I've been doing this for like as long as you two have, and then this is going. It's like it's oh, all about see. national yeah. security. Yeah. They they are going to consider ETs dangerous, deadly, and a national security threat to everybody, to our airways, mm -hmm. everything. False flag is a big buzz in this field right now. We'll definitely we're going to see it. I think. I hope. But, uh, I hope yeah, you guys are right. Yeah. This red peanut right. says we have Tic Tac UFOs. How much is them, and how much is the ETs? That's an important thing that There's, we need to consider. Yeah, there was a comment made um, recently. I watched it, I rewatched this documentary where they, you know, there was like Ralph Blumenthal and Stan, Stan Freeman, and all they were kind of mentioning how there's there's them, there's us, there's us pretending to be them, and there's them pretending to be us pretending to be them. <laughs> 
how yeah. do you make sense of it right it's like oh, oh my gosh no, it's, it's insane it's insane <laughs> right. we okay. we all we all have real chances on our side right now if we all just stick together and, and work this out and just let the powers to be that know know that it doesn't matter what's going on or what's happening all around us we're facing things that we should work together for that's what we should be pushing them to go yeah. Okay, period. That is the most important thing we could all be doing as far yeah. as the government. And every time you run to their bandstand and sit there and trapped by what they're saying, you're not thinking that and you're not doing that. And it should be, this is our number one goal in life right now. Sustainability, making our lives okay, understanding what's coming. Don't die. Stupid. I'm not kidding. <laughs> you know? awesome. Just don't. I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay. We're we're wrapping up for the last five or 10 minutes here. So I'm going to pop a few more questions in if I can. And here's an interesting one from Jay Yarbrough Music. Question to the panel. Does it feel that those with higher ascension, those with ego naturally under control of allowing kindness, may be less likely to have ET experiences? I'm going to say no. <laughs> yeah, look at me, guys. Way. Come on. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty, uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm, I have a, I'm a very soft man like it, most people would would say I'm, they this is going to sound again i'm going to sound like an a-hole there's a new word nowadays i think it's called sigma right hmm. it's the kind of person it's a kind of usually male figure who they're not alphas alphas are like dominant they take control they, they control the situation they you know sigmas are more the guys that just know they don't have to be alphas they hmm. they have a control and understanding of their of their power and their ability and their very confident in themselves. Um, I'm Sigma in, in a way that I don't impose. I just allow myself to be known as what I am. And and I also care deeply about people. I'm a very, very soft, sensitive guy. So, and I don't have the positive, you know, D Dolly and Preston have a much more positive outlook on the phenomena than I do. Guys, I am on the completely far other spectrum of this. Um, I think that what you guys are talking about is real. I just think there's another aspect that's just as real, but very concerning. And yet, again, I, I'm I have experiences. So yeah. obviously, they, that's not a that's not an exclusive club where only the nice people that are ascended have the experiences. I'm a fear driven guy, and I've had experiences. Yeah. Well, one thing I have noticed, if I may, Dolly, is yeah, that contactees are incredibly nice people. They just are, and people who are open to contact. People who are want this is a pattern I've noticed. People who are, you know, let's see, doctors, nurses, inventors, musicians, people who are teachers, writers, people who are trying to help humanity. Those are the ones ETs are often reaching out to. Mm, the it's nice ironic. People. It's ironic. No, yeah. my nature is I was to be this way. My nature has literally been for centuries bred up to get to where I'm at right now, okay? And one of the things is, is that I'm a number one protective of humanity, okay? I don't think that any of us should suffer. I don't think any of us should be uh, maimed, hurt, or otherwise, and I'll protect you against anything like that. I will come in swinging, I'm not kidding you. What the problem with that is, is this, and this is what ET had to curb in me a little bit, is that I have to consider that we all have a choice on how we, make our lives and there are people who are here roaring and and acting like a clams yeah. you know uh like what <laughs> well i'm not gonna say another word okay yeah <laughs> not pretty anyway and, and i can't do anything about what they're doing the only time i will protect is if you come after me or somebody that i love or right. somebody i'm near and they need protecting i will immediately act and I'm not going to try to kill you or anything, but I will make you understand that what you're doing is not acceptable and you're going to stop now, one way or the other. And I leave no bones about it. And that's my natural intent. I want you to understand this ETs are the same way. And whether you realize it or not, they've been protecting a lot of us for a long time. I will give you Maelstrom as number one. Uh, Maelstrom made a huge show of that to make sure that the powers that be here understand that what they're doing is wrong and they will shut them down if they have to. And they made that statement and everybody here is going, oh, oh, oh. you don't understand what that meant when they did it. That was a show of protection against mm -hmm. 
them and humanity. They were protecting us, no, not them. Yeah, sure. I just I do want to bring I do want to bring this up. I can't remember the name of the uh, of the, the the nuclear facility that the, in Russia where they turned them on, um, which could have literally right. ca caused mutually sure destruction. I, I just feel like there's a lot more going on, Dolly. And again, I yes. respectfully please. I, I'm just so you guys know, Dolly and Preston invited me on here, and I am I have a different view, which means you guys are you guys. Well, we have to hear both sides. Though, yeah. But I appreciate Everybody that because needs to hear both sides. no, but I appreciate that because seriously, people. I'm a I'm not like a doom and gloom guy until we talk about this stuff. And then people are like, man, you are a doom and gloom guy. It's like, no, I just feel like there's another <laughs> aspect. There's just another, there's more going on in my mind, and I believe, than just you know the positive. All right. Well, we have time, I think, for one more question. So I'm gonna pop this one up from Allison Carr. What does Marquise think about the men in black? They are not human. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I think you're right, because people talk about men in black in two ways, government agents and then the real men in black. Right, right. The real ones are the ones that do yeah. that are that have a more bizarre presence, if a very clear, bizarre presence. Yeah, I haven't have run you, have you, have you ever, like written it all down, Marquise, and like like kept records of all the sightings of no. men in black and then figured out what was their agenda and what was going on and like, you know, did a statistical data on it at all? To, to um, understand why. If you're talking about it, my research is extensive. I'm, um, I'm thinking it is. Yeah, yeah. So I've unfortunately I've spent way too much. By the way, thank you guys for being so kind, chat. Mm -hmm. um, I've spent way too much time. Most of my most of my um, research is done through reading. So I just kind mm -hmm. of full disclosure, reading, reading, reading is where I learn most of what I know. Um, only this last year has it come from studying. What's up, UP Studies Podcast? Only has <laughs> it been through the mm -hmm. conversations lately this year that I've learned from people, which has, by the way, expanded my perspective um, as well. Um, but when it comes to my notes, it's there's a sickening uh, amount of <laughs> information that I have. It's almost obsessive, if you will. It's obsessive. It's obsessive. Um, because I want to, I want to understand. I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to wrap it up. So, Marquis, right. do, do you have any social media handles or any events or anything you want to people sure. to know I about? Mean, or yeah, I would say, I would say, if you guys want to, the best place to check me out is on Twitch, at Dimensions of Reality on Twitch. But I am also now, and by the way, this is a new thing on YouTube as Dimensions of Reality podcast. They are both all one word. So, Twitch Dimensions of Reality. And then YouTube Dimensions of Reality podcast. That is where you guys can hang out with me. You can chat with me. I talk to the audience. We have conversations. And, and by the way, my audience, they always tell me I'm wrong. So we have fun with that too, guys. So. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's fun. Michael keeps asking me about the schoolyard encounters. I would love to talk. I'm, I'm going to have to do a whole show on the schoolyard encounters. I'm going to bring on some witnesses. But yeah, I want them to talk to Congress about them. <laughs> I'll talk to Congress, sure. <laughs> if they invite there's me. a lot that yeah there's a lot that you have you have a lot of uh, uh again those those accounts man those encounters are important all right well, Absolutely. I, guess, I guess we're gonna have to wind it up thanks so much marquis you, you were super pleasure, awesome <laughs> it was a real it, pleasure yes and, we'd uh, like you to come back okay <laughs> yes the answer is yes <laughs> Very thank you guys. yeah all right dolly you want to take us out Yes. Thank you all for coming to the light gate. We love you all. Thank you for all your comments and, and uh, working with us in chat. Um, we will be on next Monday and Preston probably knows who's coming. I don't have it on the top of my head, but we'll see you then. Thank you. Uh, New Orleans United Public Radio Network 107.7 FM and United Paranormal Radio Network 103. I'm mean, 105.3. Thank you all. Good night. Love you. <laughs>